So hello everybody. I ask in previous Clap introductions if there is interest in really hands-on developing with Clap, and yeah, sadly there is. So it seems I have to do it. And this will be a multi-part series: uh, how to get into developing with Clap. So the Clever Audio plug-in interface, where you can code plugins which do sound processing or full instruments, and which can be used in hosts which support this new Clap standard. The first part will be the boring part, <laughs> but I definitely urge everybody to watch it anyway, because there are very important topics in it. I first will talk about licensing a bit, because I noticed also in forum discussions, not many people are really aware of what that means. And even if you're a small developer, or if you want to set up a new company to produce plugins, this is very, very important to understand what are the issues with licensing. Then we will look a little bit of already available frameworks or frameworks which support now a clap, then already available tools which make your life easier when developing clap plugins. And we will then have a specific look at CMake, which is also necessary to develop clap plugins. So let's dive right in. First part, licensing. What is the thing with a license? So every software or every library you get comes with a license which you have to fulfill. So if you want to use it, there are even websites like choosealicense.com which help you if you want to put your product under a license to get all those little details. Yeah, and a word of warning, I'm not a lawyer or anything uh, in that regard. So this is not legal advice I'm giving here. You definitely should check with a real lawyer if you especially want to build up a company around something like Clap or plugins. I cannot go in all of the details, but some basics you absolutely need to understand in that area is the difference between a permissive versus a copyleft open source license. The copyleft ones are mainly the one from the GNU community. So the GNU general public licenses, there are different versions. And they basically say, if you use that source or this library, or if you make changes, you have to make all your code available. So if you take a library in your project, you have also make available all your source code of your own project, which is normally not the thing you want to do as a company, because other companies might use that too and also make a business out of it, which might be okay in some reasons, but this is always up to discussion. The current one is a GPL v3, which closed some uh, loopholes which were in there, for example, in the old one license, you could run code on a server without ever publishing in it. And so you also had not to publish the code changes and that's what they wanted to have fixed. Also worth mentioning is the LGPL, so the lesser GNU public license, which means it's normally for libraries. If you make changes to the libraries, you always have to publish them too. But if you integrate it in your product, which can also be a commercial product, it's okay. You don't have to publish your code. So LGBL libraries are normally also okay to integrate into your project. So the more permissive ones, which for once allow to use it in a commercial product, and you also do not have to share your code is, for example, Apache license, which is most famously known for their web server or the Tomcat server. If you run Java in the back end, you might have heard of that. And also there are different variations of the BSD license or the Berkeley software distribution license, which is also very permissive. And uh, the one that Clap uses is MIT license. And those last two basically say, don't bother us with anything <laughs> until you keep our copyright notice, you are good to go to do anything you want with it. Yeah. And that's an important thing. You always, with all the licenses, you at least need to publish as well their copyright license with your software. So if you distribute your plugin, you always need to wrap it with the license notice of all the APIs or libraries you use in your product. 
Another thing you need to know about is dual licensing. So this is a business model many open source companies work with. It basically means as a copyright holder of a software, you are allowed to issue multiple licenses. So this is totally okay. What most of them do is they have this dual licensing. They publish the software under GPL v3. So which means if you do an open source project where you're okay with also publishing all your code, you can go and use this GPL v3. But if you're a company and don't want to publish your code, you need to sign the company license or buy this company license or pay fees for that. So there are the differences in that and you need to read about these things. So why I'm mentioning especially dual licensing. If you're already in the business of developing plugins, then you definitely heard about the VST discussion. There is also a KVR thread about it, which by now covers 36 pages. And if you want to know all the details about this discussion, you can dig into that. The follow-up, the VST3, especially also uses now dual licensing. Before that, with VST2, you only had to sign such a company license. And with 3, they are also now doing this GPL and company license business model, which is totally okay. Many companies do that and I don't want to charge that at all. What then is interesting is what you read in a VST three licenses of Steinberg, which you can get from if you download the VST SDK, you need to sign this license agreement, which is included in the download and sign it and send it to Steinberg. It contains some interesting aspects. So first one, it's a fee and royalty free. So you don't have to pay any money to Steinberg for using it. But what gets interesting is the term and the termination. So when can they terminate this agreement. And this is interesting to look at. So they can terminate this agreement with 24 months written notice. So this is basically the result of that people did not want to switch to VST3 from VST2. And so basically they can now tell you, hey, there is VST4 coming. And in 24 months, you need to switch then to VST4. The next paragraph makes it more interesting. They can also terminate it with in six months if there is a new version. So my example with VST4 would even mean you could be forced to switch to VST4 in six months. And if you look, for example, at native instruments, how long it takes them to port all their plugins and they have gazillions of plugins to VST3. This is interesting to think about if your company could cope with such a demand. Also interesting is if there is any breach of this agreement, they can cancel your license in 14 days. So, for example, if you did not handle their trademark correctly or anything, they could give you a notice 14 days that you are no longer allowed to distribute your product. Interesting is also number six. It's sufficient that Steinberg sends the termination to the last known email address. So they drop you a mail that you basically cannot distribute any longer your software. Okay, so this is always open for your restriction and you could fight that. But since many companies are when men or when women shows in that business, but he has big lawyers or time or money to fight such things. As I said, I don't want to judge Steinberg. This is what many companies do. It's totally legal, okay. But you for yourself need to think about if this is okay for you to building your company on such agreements. And then I got a bit curious and I wanted to check out since next part frameworks also choose is running such a dual licensing. And I wanted to see what they write in this paragraph term. And termination. They also have this paragraph. It's interesting to read that the first one says this agreement shall remain in effect in perpetuity perpetuity for the version originally acquired. So if you, for example, have choose six and you sign this agreement, you can use it forever and as long as you like. But interesting to note, they also have the same announcement with 14 days, a written notice. They don't say how they get this notice. So it might be also per email. Yeah. So also if you hear do something wrong to this uh, license agreement, they could also terminate your product in 14 days notice. So also something to think about if you buy into such a framework. 
if you follow the discussion with Clap now, this was a motivation for many, many developers to have such a very permissive license like MIT, where you could use it forever. You can make changes to it, whatever you want. Then nobody, no external part can say you cannot do that anymore. This is a very, very important thing to know about and to know about Clap. And that's why I wanted to have this introduction in this video. This leads me now to frameworks. So I already talked about Choose. And since many developers base their work and their plugin on the Choose framework, which is now just released as version 7, and it's not supported directly in Choose, but there is an unofficial Clap plugin support, which you can also get on GitHub. This extension is also MIT license, but as I said, you need to be aware that Choose it has its dual licensing, GPL and commercial. It has also some details which might not work for you, so read up on GitHub what it can and what it cannot do yet. Another very popular framework is iBlock 2 framework, which is a C++ framework as well to do cross-platform audio plugins or applications. And this is based on a Setlib-like license, so also a very permissive one. And they have already a version, which is not the official one, but it's available here in this Clap branch. And you can already experiment with that and build Clap plugins as well. Already mentioned before, this NIH plugin is interesting if you are a Rust developer. So if you want to develop with Rust, you can totally do that now. And they already also support now Clap as a target. Something I was not aware about is this Avendish, which has this very interesting description to be a declarative polyamorous. I do not even know what this word means. Cross-system intermediate objects. Okay, it's basically something similar. So also plugin framework and what is interesting it can generate max msp and pure data object which i'm not aware that any other framework can do that and now also they support clap as well and you also need to be aware here they're also running the dual licensing model gplv3 as well as their commercial license which also i think fees are involved in that Okay, moving on to tools. So there are two nice little tools available already. There is a validator which stresses your plugin a little bit and you can check it out. Here also the link for GitHub. And there is also a little tool which prints out the metadata information of your Clap plugin. So you can use that to see if that most basic feature is working. And if that works fine, it will also be read at least in Bitwig and other hosts so you can start debugging if you have other issues as well. I guess in the future I will also have a look in these tools but for the moment just for your information if you're already an experienced developer and want to get started right away. The only tool you need to be aware about and you need to install and use is CMake. CMake is also an open source cross-platform family of tools designed to build test and package software. So it does quite a lot and the nice thing it is that you can run it on Windows Windows, Mac, and also Linux, and basically the little or oh, large uh, description file how to build your project can be used on all systems, or at least you can check which system you are running and then make adaptions for it. I will not go into CMake because there are tons of CMake tutorials available on the web. Just to get you a little bit started, I will show you how you can install it. So you can simply go to the cmake.org page and you can download the uh, match installer for your system. They have all the different platforms supported so you can simply download and install it. Important is that you have it in your path so you can simply open any shell uh, of your system and then type cmake dash dash version and then cmake should show up and tell you its version. I noticed when I first tried it I think it needs a pretty recent cmake. I think uh, even I'm not sure 21 3 to 21 one or something, it will tell you if you build it with Clap, then if it works or not. So to be sure, make sure you have the latest version installed. On Windows, there's also another option. If you, for example, prefer to use an IDE, like for example, Visual Studio here, the community edition, which is also free to use, there is this installation option.
option if you select C++ stuff to install, then there is an option to have also the C++ CMake tools for Windows installed. And then if you run the developer PowerShell from Visual Studio or also from the Windows Start menu, then you can also use CMake and this will take care of configuring all the environment variables for you so you don't need to deal with that. And there you should also just to check, type CMake dash dash version and there you should come up this version. These are the things you should get going till the next part is available and we will dive into hands-on developing. So the plan is next time we will look into building a plugin and running it, how that works, and then look a bit into debugging and then dive into code. How does this API work? And then also look a bit into extensions. So at least that's the plan. And until next time, write some funky code.